Welcome to episode 15. This is the final episode of my 500 day trip across the Americas. In this episode, I finally head down home to Texas from Alaska. Anxious to get home, I decide to drive nonstop for 22 hours straight and over 1200 miles to make it home after a year and a half on the road. But this is my new buddy Scott and Scott has an amazing uh, bat cave or man cave, so to say. And uh, he's got the airplanes, he's got the guns, he's got the animals on the wall. So it's pretty cool. It's an awesome place. And he's going to take this airplane ride, which we'll see next. But today is a very good day. Because I'm going to ride in an Alaskan bush plane. Like this one. Which is this one. I'm pretty freaking excited about this. Then we go try to see a glacier. It's going to be really cool. If we see something, we can shoot it. With this beautiful rifle mounted on it. So a fun parking spot for the day. Hangar for airplanes. take a piece of ice from the glacier and eat it because I think that's pretty unique mm. ice glacier bring in Kamloops Canada I met the most lovely of people we have Judy and we have Gail who are amazing couch so so if you're ever in Kamloops Canada which is a little off from things but I recommend you stay with them and you'll find them and if you need any information be sure to shoot me an email and I'll get you to them because you'll have an amazing time I had Thanksgiving dinner with them and they were so lovely and, uh, and thank so you so much. He, he uh, looks lovely too. Okay. Thank and, you. Um, and if he comes to stay with you, you might need Kleenex because we're both tearing up. No. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> That's true. That's too much. That's true. So thank you, ladies. <laughs> Today is the first day in three weeks, three and a half weeks, that I am actually hot and I've had to layer down because there's sun. And I finally made it south here, uh, to North Canada, near the border with the U.S. And finally, it's warm. Finally, there's other bikers. You know, everybody's just riding enjoying the day and it's so wonderful to to be warm and hot and not be freezing my ass off like i had the past three and a half weeks so i'm so happy <laughs> the strange and random crap you find on the road is uh the world's largest cross-country skis here in uh in canada near kamloops roadside attraction of the americas so in montana coming down from alaska and it seems quite the opposite it seems like i just got to alaska <laughs> from montana because the snow has eventually caught up to me. So, and one thing I learned today is actually uh, this thing called grapple, which is not really snow, but it's kind of like a very fluffy thingamajig I've never seen before. So, I learned something today. Apparently, it's pretty good. It's like a snow cone. I'm here with uh, Jessica and her sister, and apparently, this is the weather they walk their dogs in the Montana, which is ridiculous if you ask me. <laughs> the, dogs the, love it. the dogs love it, which is what's important, right? to the border with Montana and Wyoming and today is my day of reckoning. Today will either end in glory or it will end in shambles and today I have decided to drive literally from Canada or Montana all the way to Mexico uh, or Texas. So basically it's a thousand miles, 1100 miles in less than 24 hours and it's going to be quite a challenge and you're going to see my face what it is now. I'm going to try to document the whole thing uh, me going happy to sad to crazy to insane because it's not going to be easy it's going to be very difficult so you're going to see the whole process uh, unfold uh, as we speak so why am I doing this you may ask um, well I think it's quite a suiting way 
to end such an epic journey on my last 24 hours of this journey uh, in such an epic way. So an epic journey to an epic end to an epic adventure on an epic challenge at the very last day of a thousand miles in less than 24 hours. So no sleep, no caffeine, no luxuries, no heated stuff, no, no luxuries, no nothing. Just mind over matter. Just gassed up. I'm going to be documenting on the spot. I'm currently there. Going to go to Mexico. So the journey of a thousand miles in 24 hours begins now. So two hours in, having a quick lunch break and not much time to do much. So got to hurry up and uh, keep on going on the road. All right, I'm officially into hour seven and a half on the thousand miles in 24 hours. So only seven hours out of 20 hours so far and I can already feel the uh, effects of it. So this is not easy. <laughs> so after seven hours, my, my hand is hard to uh, hard to use because I've been gripping for seven hours and my back is kind of hurting and my legs are pretty sore and a lot is a lot is making it very difficult to continue on so I am now officially into hour 11 of my ridiculous ride body is starting to hurt a lot after driving two bathroom breaks three food breaks this will be the fourth one be rough the next uh, what is it 487 miles. Oh man. I'm already developing calluses on my hand from holding the, the thing so long, the hold the throttle so long. And my, my hands are, are tired. My neck has been fighting the wind all day. Welcome to hour 15 of driving non-stop. And I am now feeling it. <laughs> the body is tired, the mind is tired, the arms and the hands are tired. It's very cold now. It's a desert in winter, so it's below freezing now. Can't even think. It might be the most difficult five hours of my life. Or it may not. Who knows? Welcome to hour 18. <laughs> and I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> oh, man. So if it was easy, everybody would do it. And again, it's not easy, not everybody does it. Does this look like 18 hours of non-stop driving? Hope so. I am officially on hour 20 of driving. I have traveled more than 1,100 miles and I have 80 miles to go. I can tell you the last 80 miles are the most difficult because I'm running on fumes now and 20 hours of non-stop driving insane what a what a what a great way to end the adventure <laughs> suffering but nonetheless i don't know i couldn't have picked a better ending for it but i gotta head off before i fall asleep <laughs> not really i'm okay and no caffeine yeah no caffeine mind over matter as they say all right let's go so uh in here in texas and in my trip i find uh what was his name again? Brad. This is Brad. So I find Brad who's starting his trip to South America here in Texas. So I've been exchanging information with him, giving the tips on what to do, what not to do, etc., etc. And uh, he's um, he's on the KLR as well. And it, you know, driving a KLR 85,000 miles, I I pretty much know how to do the whole thing. So uh, I'm trying to help him out. I made it to El Paso. Yeah. 1,180 miles later and 20 hours. That was ridiculous. <laughs> it's now 6 a.m. Driving all day for, tw for 20 hours. But I made it, El Paso, Texas, USA, New Mexico. Yeah! <laughs> oh. That's it. I'm back. I did the full circle around the Americas. And it's now over. It hasn't sunk in yet.